This video takes you through the highlights of unpacking and assembling a Wabi bicycle. Our bikes come 90% assembled, so this process should only take 15 to 20 minutes and not require special technical skills. However, if you are not comfortable assembling your bike, we highly recommend having a professional assemble the bike for you. Before we begin, note that some parts of this video, such as the unpacking process, are on a faster playback speed to shorten the video length. To unpack and assemble your bike, you'll need several tools. A 4mm, 5mm, and 6mm Allen wrench, either as separate wrenches or as a multi-tool, wire snips, scissors, a knife, and bike grease. If you have a water bottle cage, you'll also need a 3mm Allen wrench. Before unpacking the box, check to make sure there is no significant damage to the box itself, such as large holes or crushed sides or corners. If there is, take a picture of the box and the damage for future reference. To open the box, use your scissors or utility knife to cut the tape along the top of the box to start. Then open the flaps and fold them back clear from the top of the box. This ensures that the staples don't scratch the bike or the components when it's removed. After the box is open, first remove the installation card and tubing sticker. You can take them out of the plastic envelope and set them to the side. Next, remove the other contents on the top of the box, including the saddle and pedals, and also set those to the side. To remove the bike, grab the top of the bike with one or two hands and pull the entire bike and packaging out of the box at once. Set the bike down on a soft surface and lean it gently against a wall or other solid backing. Be sure to check the box for any other remaining items before you put it aside. Use your scissors or your knife to gently cut the tape and plastic wrapping around the bike. Be careful not to scratch the frame or any of the components. Next, detach the handlebars from the frame. Start by cutting the zip ties. If they are drop bars, they will be hooked into the front wheel, so be careful when removing. Other handlebars will just be zip tied to the top two. Gently allow the handlebar to hang to the side of the frame. Next, cut the zip ties holding the front wheel in place. Then, carefully slide the front wheel off the crank arm and set it aside. Next, remove the packaging from the front fork and headset and stem. Next, carefully unwrap the handlebars. To install the handlebars, start by removing the faceplate using your 4mm Allen wrench. Carefully remove each bolt and set them aside. Insert the handlebars into the stem clamp. You don't need to perfectly center the bars or get them at the correct angle to start, as you'll adjust them toward the end of the assembly. Place the faceplate over the bar clamp area and then reinsert the four bolts. Tighten the four bolts down using your 4mm wrench. These bolts are pre-grease, so you don't need to apply grease when inserting them. When tightening the bolts, be sure to tighten them evenly and use a cross pattern so the faceplate is evenly clamped down across the bar. Tighten them to a light torque to just hold the bars in place for now. 
Carefully remove the remaining packaging, including zip ties and any of the foam tubing that protects the frame. Before installing the front wheel, remove the fork protector from the front dropouts. Next, remove any zip ties and hub protectors from the front wheel. If needed, loosen the front wheel bolts by hand to give enough room to slide the wheel into the fork. Also, pay attention to the direction of the tire on the wheel. It should be inserted so that any directional arrows are pointed forward. Slide the wheel into the fork dropouts. There may be a slight bit of resistance. Be sure the brake quick release is open to allow the wheel to slide past the brake pads. Once in place, tighten the wheel bolts down with the 5mm Allen wrench. We recommend a torque of 10 newton meters. Next, close the brake quick release and if needed, recenter the brakes by hand. Before installing the saddle, use your 5mm wrench to loosen the seat binder bolt. Remember to always loosen it on the drive side. Next, grease the seat post and grease the interior of the seat tube. This is important to prevent seizing later. Now, insert the seat post into the seat tube. Determine the right height for a saddle and make sure it's even with the top tube of the bike. Then use your 5mm wrench to tighten the seat bolt binder bolt down to a torque of 5 newton meters. When installing pedals, be sure you install the correct pedal on the correct side of the bike. Each pedal is marked as either left or right. The left pedal goes on the left side or the non-drive side of the bike. First, grease the spindle. Next, thread the pedal spindle so it goes counterclockwise, not clockwise. This is important for the left pedal. Next, use your 6mm wrench and tighten down the pedal from the back side of the crank. The right pedal goes on the drive side of the bike. This pedal threads in a normal clockwise position. You can also use your 6mm wrench to tighten it from the back side of the crank also. Finalize your handlebar position by centering them and finding the correct angle and then tightening down the faceplate bolts. Next, pump up your tires to your desired PSI. And then finally, go through the entire bike and tighten down all your bolts to make sure that everything is ready for your ride. These bolts include your wheel bolts, brake bolts, seat binder bolts, stem bolts, chain ring bolts, and anything that may have come loose during shipping or needed final tightening during assembly. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at any time.